For centuries, Stonehenge has stood as one of the greatest enigmas of the ancient world. A ring of towering stones, each weighing up to 30 tons arranged with precision by people who had no wheels, no cranes, and no modern tools. But one mystery loomed larger than all others. Where did these massive stones come from? For 400 years, researchers suspected the stones, known as sarsens, came from somewhere in Wiltshire, England. But without definitive proof, it remained just a theory. The problem? These stones are found all over southern England, making it nearly impossible to pinpoint their true origin. Then, in 2019, an incredible breakthrough changed everything. A missing piece of Stonehenge, a long-forgotten core sample taken in 1958, resurfaced in the hands of an elderly man who had once worked on a restoration project. This tiny fragment, unnoticed for decades, held the key to solving a centuries-old puzzle. Using cutting-edge scientific techniques, researchers were able to compare its geochemical makeup to stones across England. And what they found was astonishing. How did a single piece of stone finally reveal the truth? And what does it tell us about the ancient builders of Stonehenge? Stick around, because what you're about to hear will rewrite history. Stonehenge is an architectural marvel, but for centuries, the origins of its massive stones remained one of archaeology's most puzzling questions. The site consists of two types of stones, the smaller blue stones, which researchers determined came from Wales, and the larger sarsen stones, which form the iconic outer circle and trilithons. The sarsens, each weighing between 20 and 30 tons, were the biggest mystery. For years, experts believed these stones came from somewhere in North Wiltshire, but they couldn't pinpoint a precise location. The problem? Sarsen stones are found in multiple places across southern England, making it nearly impossible to determine exactly where the builders sourced them. These massive rocks are naturally scattered across the landscape, sometimes appearing as isolated boulders, other times in clusters. Without knowing where they originated, archaeologists couldn't fully understand how or why they were transported to Stonehenge. Adding to the mystery was the sheer difficulty of moving such colossal stones. How did people more than 4,500 years ago transport them without wheels, pulleys, or draft animals? Some theories suggested that Neolithic builders dragged them on wooden sledges across miles of rough terrain. Others speculated that they rolled them on logs, reducing friction and making transport slightly easier. But considering the size and weight of these stones, neither explanation seemed entirely sufficient. More extreme theories even suggested supernatural involvement or alien intervention, though no evidence has ever supported such claims. Adding to the intrigue, historical records show that as early as the 16th century, scholars were already debating the origins of the Sarsens. Some believed they were deposited by glaciers during the Ice Age, while others insisted they were sourced locally. Over the centuries, countless studies attempted to pinpoint their exact origin, but without modern technology, the question remained unanswered. For centuries, researchers searched for clues, but the answer remained elusive. That is, until 2019, when an unexpected discovery changed everything. A long-forgotten core sample taken from one of the Sarsens in 1958 suddenly resurfaced, giving scientists a new way to analyze the stones. This tiny fragment, unnoticed for decades, would finally reveal what experts had been searching for. The true origin of Stonehenge's giant stones. In 2019, a surprising twist in the search for Stonehenge's origins unfolded. Not through cutting-edge excavation or high-tech imaging, but thanks to a forgotten piece of Stonehenge that had been missing for over 60 years. Back in 1958, a restoration project at Stonehenge required workers to drill into one of the massive sarsen stones to insert metal support rods. During this process, they extracted a 42.5-inch long core sample from the rock. At the time, it didn't seem significant, so one of the workers, Robert Phillips, took it with him when he moved to the United States. For decades, the core sat in his possession, largely unnoticed. But as he neared his 90s, he decided to return the core to English heritage. 
the organization responsible for Stonehenge's care. This single act of generosity gave scientists an unprecedented opportunity. For years, they struggled to determine the stone's exact source because destructive testing wasn't allowed on the monument itself. The only way to analyze the stones would have required taking samples directly from them, something unthinkable for such a historic site. But with this newly returned core, researchers could finally conduct tests without harming the monument itself. A team of scientists carried out a geochemical fingerprinting process, a technique that identifies a rock's unique mineral composition. They compared the core's geochemistry to sarsen stones from 20 different sites across southern England, hoping to find a match. The results were astonishing. Out of all the locations tested, only one matched perfectly. Westwoods in Wiltshire, about 15 miles from Stonehenge. After centuries of speculation, scientists had finally pinpointed the true origin of Stonehenge's sarsens. But this discovery raised new questions. Why did the builders choose Westwoods over other sarsen-rich locations? Was it simply because of proximity, or was there a deeper spiritual or cultural significance to the site? And then came another major mystery. How did they transport these enormous stones? Moving multi-ton monoliths across uneven terrain without modern tools or machines was an unimaginable challenge. Some believed they used wooden sledges, while others thought they rolled the stones on logs. Whatever the method, this revelation was groundbreaking. Scientists weren't just solving an old mystery, they were rewriting history. Pinpointing the origin of Stonehenge's massive sarsen stones was a breakthrough. But it led to another mind-boggling question. How did Neolithic people transport these colossal rocks across 15 miles of rugged terrain more than 4,500 years ago? Each sarsen stone weighed between 20 and 30 tons, the equivalent of about five elephants. And yet, ancient builders somehow managed to move, shape, and position them with astonishing precision. This feat seems even more impossible when you consider that they had no wheels, no pulleys, and no draft animals like horses or oxen. So how did they do it? The sledge and roller theory. The most widely accepted theory is that the builders dragged the stones on wooden sledges, which were then pulled over logs acting as rollers. This would have reduced friction and made transportation easier, but not easy. The process would have required hundreds of people working together, using sheer manpower to pull the stones across the uneven, hilly landscape of southern England. The greased track theory. Some researchers believe that Neolithic people may have used animal fat or water to lubricate the ground, making it easier to slide the stones on wooden tracks. Experimental archaeology has shown that applying tallow rendered animal fat to wooden sledges dramatically reduces friction, allowing even massive objects to glide with much less effort. The Sarsen Highway? Intriguingly, recent studies suggest that the builders may have taken advantage of natural routes to move the stones. Some believe that a now lost Sarsen Highway, a relatively straight, open landscape, could have provided the easiest path from Westwoods to Stonehenge. Other theories, water transport and Ice Age assistance. Some fringe theories suggest that the stones may have been transported by boat along rivers, though there's little evidence to support this idea. Others argue that glaciers during the Ice Age may have already moved some of the stones closer to Stonehenge, meaning Neolithic builders only had to transport them a short distance. However, geological evidence suggests that the stones were deliberately moved by humans, not natural forces. Regardless of the method, what's clear is that the people who built Stonehenge possessed extraordinary engineering skills, teamwork, and determination. Their achievement remains one of the most impressive feats of prehistoric construction in human history. But why did they choose West Woods as the source of these stones? Was it purely practical, or was there a deeper reason? Let's explore that next. Now that we know where Stonehenge's massive sarsen stones came from, a new question arises. Why did Neolithic builders choose West Woods over other locations? Sarsen stones are scattered across southern England, and several other areas, including Marlborough Downs, were much closer to Stonehenge. So why embark on the massive task of transporting 20 to 30 ton stones from West Woods, which was 15 miles away? The practical advantage. One possible reason is the quality of the stone itself. 
Researchers found that the sarsen stones from West Woods are particularly high in silica, making them denser and more durable than those from other regions. For ancient builders, durability was key. After all, they were constructing a monument meant to last for generations. Additionally, West Woods was heavily forested, providing abundant wood for sledges, rollers, and trackways. This could have made it easier to construct transportation systems, reducing the effort needed to move the stones. The availability of timber would have been a major advantage in constructing the necessary infrastructure for moving such enormous objects. A sacred or symbolic choice. Another theory is that West Woods held spiritual or ceremonial significance. Neolithic cultures often attributed sacred meaning to landscapes, and some researchers believe that the source of a stone was just as important as the structure it was used for. Archaeologists have discovered evidence of prehistoric activity in and around West Woods, including burial mounds and ancient pathways. This suggests that it may have been a sacred site long before Stonehenge was built. Could it be that the builders chose these stones not just for their quality, but for their connection to something deeper, something spiritual? Aligning with the builders' intentions. Stonehenge was no ordinary monument. It was meticulously designed with its stones positioned to align with the movements of the sun. The fact that West Woods was chosen so deliberately suggests that the builders had a clear and intentional reason, whether practical, spiritual, or both. This discovery not only solves one of Stonehenge's great mysteries, but also provides insight into the engineering skills, planning, and beliefs of Neolithic people. Their decision to source stones from a specific location, despite the challenges, suggests that every aspect of Stonehenge was deeply thought out and meaningful. And with this mystery solved, one final question remains. What does this discovery teach us about the people who built Stonehenge? For centuries, the origins of Stonehenge's massive stones remained a mystery. Scholars debated, theories were proposed, and yet no one could say with certainty where the builders sourced the enormous sarsens. But thanks to a forgotten core sample in modern science, we now know the truth. Westwoods in Wiltshire provided the stones that formed one of the most iconic monuments in human history. This discovery does more than solve a mystery. It reshapes our understanding of Neolithic Britain. It proves that the people who built Stonehenge were not just skilled engineers, but also meticulous planners who carefully selected materials for both practical and possibly spiritual reasons. The effort required to transport and erect these stones speaks to an unwavering dedication to their vision. But even with this breakthrough, many questions remain. Why was Stonehenge built in the first place? Was it a temple, an astronomical calendar, or something else entirely? Could it have had a purpose that we still fail to grasp today? One thing is certain, Stonehenge continues to captivate us, proving that even in the modern age, some mysteries still endure. If you love unraveling the secrets of the past, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more history discoveries.